Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're checking out this brand new lens from Viltrox. This is their 16 millimeter F1.8 prime for the Sony E-mount. This is impressive both in terms of build quality and optical performance, and we'll cover all of that in this video. Before we get into it, a huge thank you to Viltrox for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. If you wanna check this out, I'll link it down in the description below. This video will mostly focus on the video aspect of this particular lens, but if you're a photographer, stay tuned. We're gonna cover some of that coming right up. Let's get into it. Let's start by showing you just how wide 16 millimeters is on a full frame camera. So this is my Sony 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master at F1.4. And now we're over to 20 millimeters on the Viltrox 20 millimeter F2.8 at 2.8. This is the more affordable prime lens if you're looking for that super wide or standard sort of wide field of view. And now we're over to the Viltrox 16 millimeter F1.8 prime at 1.8. Now take a look at the enhanced field of view that we get here. This is insane. I really love the field of view of this lens and it's still giving me excellent subject separation and a little bit of background blur. Usually the wider you go, it's sometimes harder to achieve that background blur, but on a full frame sensor camera like this, you can easily achieve it. We're gonna test out all of the autofocus, but firstly, what I'm gonna do is cover some of the specs and everything that you need to know about this lens because there's a few really premium upgrades on this particular unit. First up, this lens is loaded with an LCD display screen right on the front here. And this allows you to see all of the important information, including distance from a subject. This works whether you're pulling focus manually or in autofocus. There's also icons on screen letting you know if you're in manual or autofocus mode. And there's also aperture information. Speaking of aperture, this lens is loaded with an aperture ring that can cycle through the range in one third increments between f1.8 and f22. Or you can leave it set to automatic mode and let the camera do the work. Now the aperture ring can be set to click or declicked mode depending on your shooting preference, which is great. The only other lens I have in my collection that allows you to declick the aperture ring is this one right here, the Sony 24 millimeter G Master lens. So yeah, this is a much more expensive lens and this gives us all the same great functionality and more. The biggest benefit of this other than the screen and all the other great features is the fact we get two programmable custom function buttons, two, and they actually feel really responsive under the finger. This lens is loaded with a 77 millimeter front filter thread, and it also comes with everything in the box you need to get going, including a rear and front lens cap, lens hood, lens bag, instructions, and warranty card information. Now inside of the rear lens cap here, you can see that we get a USB-C port. Now this is for updating the firmware, and Viltrox has really simplified the whole firmware update process. All you have to do is plug this into your computer via USB-C, it will be detected as a drive. You can then drop the new firmware into that drive that pops up and that's it. It's nice and simple and it's by far the most streamlined firmware upgrade experience so far. Build quality wise, this is a premium lens. It's a notch above my beloved 35 millimeter and 55 millimeter Viltrox alternatives and it only costs $549, which makes it great value. This is a bit of a niche lens. Not everyone will love or need a super wide angle lens like this, but for those who do, it's a great choice for both video and photographic purposes. Now it's 15 elements in 12 groups, including four ED lenses and three aspherical lenses. The HD nano multi-layer coating is water resistant and the lens body itself is dust proof. I spoke to Viltrox earlier today just regarding the weather resistance of this lens and they said it's not guaranteed to be weather sealed, but it will no doubt be fine in a light drizzle, which I tested today and had no issues whatsoever. As you've seen throughout this video, this lens is quite large. It's a lot larger and heavier than the Sony G Master lenses and way bigger than the original Viltrox lenses I showcased on the channel. Now, when it comes to this 20 millimeter F2.8, it's about two or three times larger and two or three times heavier. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about buying a lens for travel. Now, the minimum focusing distance is 27 centimeters. So you can get up nice and close to objects and create some really great looking subject separation. If you're shooting manually, you can turn the lens until you see the minimum focusing distance on the LCD, and then just move toward your subject or vice versa for infinity focus. This is one of the huge benefits of that on-screen display, allowing you to ensure the focus point is actually where you want it. Let's do a quick autofocus test on the Sony a7S III with eye tracking enabled. I have the sensitivity set to three and the speed set to five. So this is how it performs for this type of test. I'll bump, bob in and out of frame, all that kind of stuff. You can get a good sense of how it works. Now this lens is a little bit sluggish in some of these tests. I've had this for a while now and I've tested it out. I really feel like you've got to sort of bump up the speed to get the most out of this lens. 
especially from those transitions like this. See how long that took? It's still very smooth, but it just takes a little while to lock onto subjects once you cover up your face. Just a little bit slow, so let's bump it up a bit. Now we're at five and five on both the sensitivity and speed, and I have a feeling that this is going to perform way better. I always like to do these tests and just talk a little bit about the experience with it. So as I hold up my hand now, it's still a little bit on the slow side, but it definitely tracks my eye fine. I can see the eye box on screen once I get close enough. It seems to be doing a pretty great job. And if any of this fails, I'll comment on it at the end of the video. But you know, for regular sort of work like this, if you're just gonna be walking towards the camera or doing anything in and out of frame, it's still going to find you without any problems at all. Man, I have to walk so far out to the left or right of frame with this lens because it's so wide, it's crazy. And again, look, I'm at arm's length from the lens and it looks like I'm way back. This is pretty wild. And now with the speed set all the way up to seven, I'm just gonna do the quick face test here with sunglasses on to begin with. Sunglasses off, it's so glary today, even though it's overcast. I always leave my sunnies on outside. And what I've noticed, even with the speed and sensitivity maxed out, it's still kind of sluggish to pull focus to the hand, but it does it nice and smoothly. Yeah, it still works fine. It's just definitely not the most responsive lens I've tested. Up next, we're gonna do some manual focus pulls. I'm gonna talk about the experience shooting with this. So I'm focused on the leaves right now, going to the background, going to the leaves, going to the background, and to the leaves. So I can pull focus repeatedly and reliably, and I'm no wizard or expert when it comes to manual focus. Like most wide angle prime lenses, I'm unable to see any type of focus breathing, which is great if you're a video shooter. This means you're not gonna see the frame sort of zoom in and out as it transitions from minimum to infinity focus, as you can see from these examples. All right, let's do a vlogging test. And being that I haven't been to the gym for the last month or so due to a torn forearm, I can tell you that this lens combination might look great, but it's getting kind of heavy already just on my shoulder. So yeah, I gotta get my act together, get back to the gym. But basically this is the kind of look you can get with this lens on the Sony a7S III for vlogging with active steady shot on. Now, if I was to turn active steady shot off and just go back to standard mode, it is slightly wider, but it's going to be a whole lot more shaky and warpy. So let's go back to active steady shot on and off. As you can see, there's a bit of a difference in the field of view but not enough to warrant leaving active steady shot off. So if you've got a Sony camera, just leave it on. It's your only hope. All right, let's talk photography. So one of the things I've come to realize is how much I enjoy shooting with wide to super wide angle lenses. And it's so much fun. I actually just paired this with my Sony a7S III, which might not be the best photography camera in the world, but I took it to the lake and I was really impressed with the end result. I was able to capture some really sharp and great looking images. Now this is all shot and captured with the standard picture profile in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, so it fits better on this project's timeline. The end result was great. There's none of that sort of fisheye distortion that you might find, unless you're up close to the lens doing like a product showcase towards the edge of frame, you will notice some of that distortion, but for capturing landscapes or any scenery outside, I was very impressed with the end result. I'm not that great at taking photos, but I think once you start to get some different angles and lines in the shot, you can really get some great results out of this lens. And it was a whole lot of fun. Thanks to the fast f1.8 aperture, you can shoot in low or mixed lighting conditions without any problems whatsoever. So if you've got a full frame camera, pairing it with this lens, you're going to get great results. All right, let's wrap this video up. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on this Viltrox 16 millimeter f1.8 prime lens. So. It's an absolute beast, but it's by far the best built Viltrox lens I've had my hands on. And it also rivals far more expensive lenses. It's actually a girthier lens in the hand than even the Sony G Master. And I love this focus ring. The focus ring experience is fantastic. All the buttons and switches feel great. The aperture clicks are really solid as well. It might not lock into the automatic position as well as other lenses on the market, but it's locks in there well enough that I don't think that I would personally knock it out of position. So yeah, build quality wise, this is fantastic. If I'm working a gimbal or if I'm just shooting a YouTube video outside, I can 100% recommend the image quality out of this lens. But I gotta be honest, if I'm traveling, I probably wouldn't take this. I would take the 20 millimeter F2.8 lens. I mean, if we check out the size difference, right? It's night and day, and this is just so much lighter. I did a full review of this lens. So if you're looking for a great little travel lens, I'll link it up in the cards and you can check it out after this video. But this is a really premium niche lens and I think it will appeal to the right people. Having the screen on the front is awesome. I haven't used a lens with this feature before and I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. So a massive thank you again to Viltrox for sending this out. 
I don't really have too many complaints with it. I guess the size and weight might be one complaint and the autofocus speed, especially for product showcase, might not be as responsive as other lenses. It does get there and it does it smoothly, but it's just not quite as responsive. But I've got my fingers crossed. Maybe a firmware upgrade might fix that in the near future. If you wanna check this out, I'll link it below. Thanks for watching. My name's Shane. I will catch you soon. See ya.